All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another lecture given by the Douglasville class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and his eternal purpose operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We owe classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Douglasville branch was established in 2014. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to school officials. The president is Dr. Jamie O'Dye, and the vice president is Dr. Dotson Wallace. In this school, we use the true correct original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that the Creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in the good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah and possible renderings of our Heavenly Father and His Son's name. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on our chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of the chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within a pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of his name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. We call it the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses to top Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes around the bell. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the threefold structure and function of the tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, so-called law of nature, and the powers laden in man. Four, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. 
Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operate the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons and children of Yahweh. Nine, to make known Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And 10, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is to speak the truth. At this time, we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Dotson Wallace. Then we'll have our scripture lesson read, 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, by Dr. Carol Dye. May we have our prayer. Let us bow our hearts and minds and thank the Heavenly Father for another opportunity to learn of him and to have our souls edified with that gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. And if anything be learned, all praises go to Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, class. Our scripture reading will be 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, read from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament. Critically compare with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by the late A.P. Trena, the Scripture Research Association. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, begins on page 246. Would that ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed ye do bear with me, for I am zealous over you with a zeal for Yahweh. For I have expelled you to one husband, then I may present you as a chaste aversion to the Messiah. But I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve with his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in the Messiah. For if he that cometh preaches another Messiah, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another evangel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with me. For I reckon I was not a wit behind the very chiefest of apostles. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the glad tidings of Yahweh freely? I robbed other assemblies, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and was in need, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me the brethren which came from Macedonia, supply. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you. And so will I keep myself. As the truth of the Messiah is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, Yahweh knoweth. But what I do, that I will do that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of the Messiah. And no marvel, for Satan transformeth himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak not according to Yahweh, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. 
seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing yourselves are wise. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take up you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How to get it? Wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of the Messiah? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths off. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day. I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in pearls of waters, in pearls of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the assemblies, who is weak, and I am not weak. Who is offended, and I burn not. If I must lose glory, I will glory in the things which concern my infirmities. The Almighty Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor, under Arius, the king, kept the city of Damascus with a garrison, desired to apprehend me. And then a basket through a window was I let down by the wall and escaped his hand. I just read to you Second Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. We want to thank everybody that is tuned in on YouTube. We also want to thank everybody that has joined us in the Zoom session. Uh, the scripture readers for tonight will be Dr. Carol Dye and Dr. Jamie O'Dodd. And for our first speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Dotson Wallace. Good evening, class. And it's an honor and a privilege to be able to have something to say about my Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. And we always like to, I always like to remember that if it wasn't for Yahweh having mercy on us one more time in this age, and given our founder a vision and a revelation, a vision of revelation about how prior to that vision of revelation, the world was worshiping the creator incorrectly, going about to follow rituals and ceremonies and things that were cherry picked from the Bible and laid on man to do, thinking that we're pleasing our father and then along comes this individual in 1931 claiming to have had direct communication from the one that wrote the Bible. And he claimed that we were doing it wrong. And not just doing it wrong, doing it all the way wrong. Just. And so I like to think about how um, that mercy that the father had. You don't have to let us in on that. And what made what made this different? What made this claim different from any other person saying that, hey, I don't like this. I, I prefer this because in America, you have the right to worship how you please. It's freedom of religion here. So what makes this claim different is that he said, not only have I had communication with the creator of, of heavens and the earth, but make me prove it to you until you're satisfied. And I had never heard nothing like that before. I didn't even know them two things could go together, proof and religion. Because again, we, 
live in the United States where it's freedom of religion. So it's, it's not really cool to question what somebody believes. You can't knock somebody's religion here as bad form. So the, the thought of idea of questioning someone's claim that they communicated with God, that was profound to me. How dare you? Oh, because because growing up in America, you kind of think that only crazy people communicate with you, say they talk to God. Here, this guy is claiming that he's had direct communication with the creator of heavens and earth. And not only that got the audacity to say, make me prove it to you until you're satisfied. And then got the nerve to turn around and use the very same Bible that we've been, that I've been using all my life, the very same creation that you live in it and your human body to do it. Man, this guy either has a bad imagination or he really has had communication with something. And so it's in the proof that makes this claim different. And we've been taught, if you, if you attend a few of these classes, that um, that's how the Savior of the world did it. And we also taught and come to find out that that Bible isn't some holy relic to hold under glass and only flip through with the white gloves on on Sunday. And only certain ordained people can read it. It's more of a reference book, referencing the son of Yahweh and his mission and the proof that he exists and that Yahweh exists. And what he's going to do for our souls or what he's done for our souls. Oh, that makes that book so much more valuable, so much more important, so much more relevant. None of this would be possible with me if hadn't I come across this teaching or somebody that has had contact with the Heavenly Father and told me about it, which is what the founder went about to do. After he had his vision, unlike most people that claim to have talked to God, he drew out what, what he saw in his vision. That's what you kind of have in front of us. It's a pictorial illustration of what he saw in his vision. We have other charts, too. So you had something to scrutinize. He said, make them prove it to you. You had something tangible that you could look at and say, okay, I can check this out. And I can check this out. So if you're obedient and follow the advice, you find out that the things he claimed were true. The three things stood out with me as I've attended this school. One of the things is that the Heavenly Father had a name and he likes it. And don't like the none use of it. Never even crossed my mind as I exist in the world where we care about our names. And our names are so important. Identity is so important. And yet, the very being that so many of us claim to hallow and, and love and worship, we, I, in the same breath, will say, oh, you can call him what you want. He ain't that petty. He know my heart. <laughs> you wouldn't let that ride if someone was referring to your name about that. Just small stuff to think about that should have mattered all along. Another thing, another tenet that was brought out as a result of the founder having this vision was um, the tabernacle pattern. And like I've expressed before, that's another thing I've never heard of before coming into contact with this class. There is a structure that the creator had built that is key to understanding him and his purpose and his plan. Oh man, that's heavy. And you saying that everything goes by? It? Everything, everything? Like all, everything? Everything. What a bold claim. And yet, this pattern is, is been in the Bible, the same Bible I've been using all my life. It's been there. Never got brought up in church. I, I don't ever remember hearing that or God's name in church. Just in the name of God, but never a name. But the third thing that this teach, the third thing that this teaching brought out that that's really just gets to the meat of the thing was the mission of the Son of 
God, who the world calls the Son of God, who we rightfully know is Yahshua the Messiah, and what he was doing when he was walking around on this earth. I've expressed plenty of times that I thought that this man was just a, a good, morally, moral person, and um, so good that he died for his beliefs. Now, I didn't know what these beliefs were. I just assumed that he was just a quote unquote good person and died for his beliefs. And um, he became a martyr. And some people founded a religion. And I was just ignorant of this individual and what he was doing. But as a result of attending one of these classes and actually reading the Bible, I come to find out that he was on a mission. He was doing something. He was saving me a soul, but not even willy nilly. He was doing it according, he had a structure to what he was doing. He was fulfilling things that was written of him in the old part of the book. The part of the book that I was taught that yeah, it was, wasn't as important as the, I mean, the 10th commandment was back there. Noah's flood was back there. That's how you really need to know. Other than that, we're using the, the, this part of the Bible that starts with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who the world, what the world calls the New Testament. You come to find out that it's not true. You come to find out <laughs> the majority of the things, the misconcepts, and the false ideals that we were taught or as a result of coming up without a knowledge of Yahweh, it's all incorrect. Okay, so we were directed. First, let's go to Luke 24 and 25 and see some individuals that knew the Messiah, they thought they knew him. Um, we'll come to find out that what they expected about him didn't happen. And uh, let's see what the Messiah does about it. So um, let's go to Luke 24 and 25. Yeah. 24 and 25. Then he said unto them, O oh, fools and slow of heart to believe every, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Okay, stop right there. He said, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets. Another profound thing to me, because when I was growing up in the church world, I assumed that the scriptures meant Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In fact, I thought that was the main part of the Bible. But if you think about it, and it was made evidently clear after attending one of these classes, that they were living Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John at that time. So they weren't written books then. That means the scriptures that they are referring to were the books that they had at that time, which would be the writings of Moses, the first five books of the Bible attributed to him, which would be called the law. And then the next 34 books, which collectively are called the prophets. Those are the scriptures. Or that is how he began that Moses and all the prophets. That's the, the book. He, that's all he had. And so that old part of the book that we have been taught that wasn't important was actually key to understanding that so-called new part of the book. We come to find out that that book contained the witness and the proof that the son of Yahweh did exist and that his mission to save us was embedded in the lives and events of the people and things that happened back during the law and the prophets. Those are some cold-blooded witnesses there to the to the age-old question, is there a creator? Or or that old question, where's God? And he's he's everywhere and never and never been nowhere. We're the ones that were lost. <laughs> That's what you come to find out. Okay, um go ahead and skip down to the 44 verse. Luke 24 and 44. And he said unto them, 
These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Okay. See, so we'll find that this one, Yahshua, the Messiah, was not walking around trying to set um, a Christian way of life or a good example or show you how to follow the golden rule or be a martyr as I mistakenly thought. But he was fulfilling the things that were written of him and the things that testified of his coming, his birth, his life, his ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection and outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Those events and those things that happened back that testified to that. So we'll know that if he could do these things, he can do that thing for my soul. We'll have faith and proof. But let's check it out. Let's check it out. First, we need to get 1 John 5 and 7 because we need to see how to pick up what our Heavenly Father is doing. And he laid down, well, 1 John 5, 7. Thank you. John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of Yahweh is greater. For this is the witness of Yahweh, which he hath testified of his son. Okay. So, Father Yahweh has left witnesses of his son, Yahshua the Messiah, in the earth plane, in the events, in the lives of people that have lived and died. And those witnesses testify to him that he is a unity, that the one spirit Yahweh is king, creator, high priest, and that that one spirit Yahweh is that life-giving spirit or that quickening spirit or that spirit that was in that body that we call Yahshua the Messiah. One self-same spirit manifesting in two manifestations. Two manifestations so you will know that one eternal spirit, Yahweh, and what he does. He is king. He is ruler. He is salvation. Not three different personalities agreeing on the same thing. One eternal spirit with three states of existence manifesting royalty, uh, priesthood, salvation. And a whole bunch of other stuff. All right. So we uh, can see one of the charts. We call this on um, the Moses chart. It's entitled Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe. And it, like everything else that the moderator said, goes by the pattern. And so you'll find that this chart is threefold. And up, well, if we zoom in on the middle, we'll see the trick of the children of Israel. And I'm talking about this because the Messiah went back here to show or to teach his disciples something about why he had to die, bury, and resurrect. So they wouldn't think it just happened all willy-nilly. He said he was telling this to them all the time. But he had went back to, this, to the law and the prophets to expound or to go into great detail. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so let's go to Genesis, um, I think 15 and 12. Yeah. Genesis yeah. 15 and 12. Okay, go ahead. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them. 
and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. Okay, stop right there. I went right here because Abraham is going to be the father of the nation of Israel. Or he's, he's um, the forefather of the nation of Israel. So what I'm saying is all of the nation of Israel ultimately is going to come from this one or he's going to be the source. So and and Abraham is up in Canaan's land, typifying the most holy place or um, Yahweh in pure spirit. And so what I'm saying is, I said before that it's going to be a reflection of what Yahshua and Messiah is going to do for your soul. And so your soul started out like everything else from the source and substance of everything, which is Yahweh and pure spirit. And as Yahweh moved, transmuted from pure spirit into the shape and form of Yahweh Elohim, he contained within that super incorporeal body, anthropomorphic body. And he's also the archetype original pattern. And pattern, if you, uh, I think the root word is father, you'll find out that that body contained all of the souls that, that will ever be angelic and human. So Abraham in type and shadow would be like Yahweh, Elohim with the father containing all of the, of the souls of man starting or originating from Yahweh, the source. Then he said that his seed, his progeny is going to um, go down into a land, no, not of, and be afflicted. So Yahweh, what Yahweh says come to pass. It's going to happen. If Yahweh said it, it's going to happen. So if we go over to Exodus, let's see, maybe the one and um, okay, let's go to Exodus one and um. Well, we might as well start one and one. Well, let's start one and five. Exodus one and five, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls for Joseph was in Egypt already and Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them now there arose up a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. And he said unto the people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Okay, start right there. their that, lives that, bitter that, with that, mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so we see that Yahweh's prediction or prophecy has come to pass. We see the um, children or the descendants of Abraham eventually did end up down into Egypt. Now, if we look at our migratory pattern, we'll see that Egypt is in the court roundabout, and you'll see that it's dark. And that's because that's representing ignorance, carnality, the physical, the flesh. And how does that relate to your soul? Well, your soul, like I said before, originated um, with Yahweh. But when we are, uh, how can I put it? 
I, I guess we like to say it like this. When we're when we're born, when we're placed in a body, when Yahweh decides to let us be born, we come in ignorant of Yahweh. We don't know who our creator is. We don't know who our source and substance is. How can you say that, Dotson? Well, somebody had to tell you what you are. Somebody had to tell you who your parents were, your birthday was. You come in ignorant of everything. Some animals, after about 20 minutes, can stand, run away from lions, stuff like that. Human babies, we come in totally ignorant as a witness to how our souls come in innocent. No knowledge of Yahweh Elohim or who our source and substance is. The negative spirit or the negative mystery takes advantage of this condition. And you see how, just like with the children of Israel, it said that they, <laughs> uh, therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. Just like down in this day and age, any, just about any religion, there's a work to do. There's something to do, a day to keep, a ceremony to keep. They inflict burdens and rituals and rules on us, claiming to be able to please Yahweh or to please God, or that's how you get to heaven. Pay this so you can get your relatives out of purgatory and things of such nature. So it's a bondage. With the children of Israel, it's a physical, literal slavery bondage. But for your soul, it's a spiritual bondage and ignorance of your creator and the way to worship him and not knowing his salvation, which equals his son. And so just like Yahweh did in this day and age for the condition of our souls, I had no knowledge of Yahweh. In fact, my first class, when I walked in and saw those wild words, I almost turned around, but I, I wouldn't, I didn't have my own car, so I couldn't leave, really. I was kind of trapped. But those, I'd never seen all the wild words. I know what that was. I knew not Yahweh. I had never heard that. If Yahweh had not given this man a vision, I still probably would not know Yahweh. So just like he did in this day and age for us, the schoolmaster back here, Yahweh manifested down in the land of Egypt, ready to manifest, to, to save them from that situation. Um, so one of the Hebrew children, oh, he said we, um, he began at Moses. So we began at Moses because in the life of Moses, we could see Yahweh manifest his principles of death, burial, and resurrection. Also some principles of intercession and salvation. As I say, the Hebrew that was getting sm smitten by the Egyptian, he also interceded. Then, because of that incident, Moses had to flee out from Egypt. He dwelled in the land of Midian for 40 years. And then Yahweh appeared to him, introduced himself to him, and told him now he was going to make good on his promise and um, save the children of Israel from their condition. Let's see. Uh, let's go to Exodus 3 and um, 6. This is um, what we see right here on the chart in this upper left. We have Moses and that picture of the angel and that burning bush on the back side of, of this mountain. And this is what's happening. All right, go ahead, Exodus 3 and 6. Exodus 3 and 6. Moreover, he said, I am the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Elohim. And Yahweh Elohim said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land, unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, 
unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I've also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And okay, Moses, you can stop right there, Dr. Guy. Because we see now that Yahweh said that he heard that cry. And he has come down to manifest salvation. And then what he does, he starts executing judgment on first it appears like he's just giving the um the Egyptians a hard time, turns the water into blood. Then he um sends what some flies, and some frogs. And then it what? He clicks them. But what you'll find out is Yahweh is executing judgment on everything that they worship down there. See, the Egyptian was a polytheistic society, meaning that they worship many gods. Or it almost sounds like, hmm, it sounds kind of like freedom of religion, but properly polytheistic. But they almost, they're very similar. So we seem to worship many gods down here. Money, kids, wife, husband, job, spouse. Money again, because that's how much we worship money. So we're no different from those people. Well, the world is no different from those, although it just don't seem like it. So Yahweh is executing judgment on all those false deities. And so when you hear the preaching of this gospel, it's executing judgment on all those false concepts and misconcepts and, and ideals and imaginations and man-made rituals and ceremonies. Because the gospel is preached from the law and the prophets with witnesses. And you can't find witnesses for any Gentile keeping any of those things from back a law that was given only to the children of Israel. You can't find witnesses for anybody doing any kind of physical worship to please Yahweh in this day and age. See, we come to find out that this thing is not about what feels good, what sounds good. I'm, I'm not calling you guys because we're pals. I call you, I mean, I talk to you guys because we're friends, but that's not why I'm doing it now. Nor am I joining this school because, man, we sound real biblical right now, y'all. We get scriptures. We got pictorial illustrations of the Bible. That's not why I'm doing this. I'm here because I want to hear how Yahshua Messiah has manifested his salvation in his law and in his prophets, and therefore in my heart and in my mind. And maybe how to tell somebody else so he could do that in them too. Wouldn't that be great Yahshua use you for a vessel like that? preach his gospel to elevate another soul. That sounds like loving the brother to me, teaching them or telling them how Yahweh gave it to them. And Yahweh gave it to me by showing me, hey, go back to this law, go back to the prophets and see these witnesses. But don't trust your feelings or how the founder said, prove it to you're satisfied. So we find out after Yahweh poured out judgment on all those false deities and stuff in Egypt. That last plague was going to be the plague of the death where Yahweh would pass through the night and send his death angel and that angel would slay the firstborn. But there was a way to escape his death or escape this doom. And that's a it's, we come to find out it's a perfect example of Yahshua Messiah and what he's going to do for your soul. All right, let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. Let's start with the first verse. Exodus, the 12th chapter, first verse. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. 
it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the house shall be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. And you shall Five keep minutes. it Five minutes. until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And you shall okay, take it. You can stop right there for a second. Um, there's two points in here that just point to just an inside job. See, in the world, it was always an outward thing, an outward show of um, love or an outward show of this or an outward show of worship to Yahweh, holding your hands up, putting them in the air and stuff like this. But look how he said, first, you're going to take to every man, every part is going to eat or partake of this lamb. And he said, every man to take the lamb according to his own eating, meaning whatever portion of lamb that fills you up, that's what you eat. It may be a portion that's bigger than the next person. It may be a portion that's less than the next portion, but that portion that you got was going to be enough to fill you up and save you from the death angel and get you over. So every portion that everybody got is enough. Just like whatever measure of the Holy Spirit that Yahshua gives you, because that's the, we'll see that that lamb is born to Yahshua Messiah, and you partake of it. And then, then he said they're eating it in their house. It's an inside job. In, in your house, and you partake of that Holy Spirit in your soul, in your heart, in your mind. And however much that is, it is enough to resurrect you from your carnality from your misconceptions, from your um, false thoughts about how to worship Yahweh and what his son was doing. And so once you have that lamb in you, then you resurrect into a new state of thinking, a new state of existence in the spirit. Just like the children of Israel, after they partook of that lamb, they was able to resurrect into the wilderness of Sinai, which correlates to the holy place in our migratory, and, and, the, and in the tabernacle pattern where they receive light from that cloud, which was an angel in that cloud, which was Yahweh Elohim, who is Yahshua Messiah. So that lamb provided light, it provided intercession, and it provided substance. Illumination, substance, and intercession. That's what you get once you get in this kingdom of Yahshua and Messiah, and that's all spiritual stuff for the edification of your soul until Yahshua and Messiah takes you over to be with his father at the end of the age. Okay, so that had to be five minutes. Um, thank you for allowing me to address the assembly and to have something to say about my creator in spirit and in truth. And if anybody got anything, I, all praises go to Yahshua and Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Dotson Wallace. For our next speaker, it's an honor and a pleasure to call on Dr. Jamie O'Dai. Good evening, class. Good evening. It's an honor and a privilege for me to testify some things that Yahweh has given me through his son, Yasmin Masai, who was the teacher of the school. Um, I enjoyed the previous speaker, and he went over some, some fundamental things that we teach in this school that you might have an understanding through Yahshua and you might be saved and inherit the kingdom. Um, can I have John 14 and 26? John 14 and 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Okay, pause there for a second, Doc. John 14 and 26 starts off by saying, but the comfort, it's, it's, it's something that was said before that. Can we kind of pick up the train of thought uh, before that? Uh, 24th verse. Mm -hmm. 
He that loveth me, excuse me, 23rd verse, Yahshua answered and said unto him, If yes. a man love, love me, he keepeth my words, mm -hmm. and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying, and the world which ye hear is not mine. Mm. But the fathers which sent me, mm -hmm. these things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. Okay, stop there. Now, the Messiah is talking to his disciples um, about what he came to do and the words that he has spoken unto them are not his of his own, but what the father had sent him to say. So continue on. 26 verse, but mm -hmm. the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, read. Whom the Father will send in my name. Now, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, the name of the person that's speaking, as we started in first in John 14 and 23, is Yahshua. That's the name of the comforter. Continue on. He shall teach you all things. So stop there. Now, he's the one that teaches you all things pertaining to himself and everything else pertaining to himself. He's the teacher of this school. Read. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever he's, I have said unto you. And he's going to remember the things that he has spoken unto you. Is that it? Peace I leave with you. He's going to leave you with peace. That's why we say peace in Yahshua. Read. Peace I give unto you. Mm -hmm. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay, stop there, Doc. So I want to continue on um, with what the previous speaker was talking about. First of all, we're trying to establish this as a school, and this is a product of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. Now, when we say, when we talk to the general public and we say, yeah, we go to a Bible school, the assumption is that it's a church because we use the term Bible. That's the assumption. Anything pertaining to the Bible is a church. That is not so. Because you have these theology schools or, the, or, or, or colleges that you can get certified as certificates in and become um, ministers. They are considered schools. And in those schools, they do research. They write papers. They, the professors teach a certain topic so you might understand the things that they were taught, uh, not saying that they have an understanding, but they may have a worldly understanding of some things that are in the Bible. Because as you start talking to those type of ministers and people who attend those assemblies, they usually attribute the things in the Bible to themselves or to some type of moral of the story or some type of um, emotional uh, uh, or some type of emotional uh, experience in trying to understand your creator and your savior, but they don't have a true understanding because they have a, um, a carnal understanding of the things that are in the Bible and haven't been taught by the teacher, which is Yahshua the Messiah. Now, the Bible itself is a compilation of visions. The previous speaker was talking about that. He talked about Abraham, which you find in Genesis how Yahweh appeared on Abraham and told him that his seed will be mistreated and, and be in the land uh, for 400 years. Then you have the same God of Abraham appearing to Moses at the burning bush, giving him a vision. Uh, 
Then you have him later on carrying Moses into the mount and giving him a 40 day vision. And then you have, after that, you have in the prophecy, you have the prophet Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel having visions of Elohim, as well as you go into the book of Psalms, David having visions of Elohim. And then you have Solomon, Yahweh appearing out to Solomon. Then you have all these prophets in the law or all these people in the law and the prophets have visions. And also when you get to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they write of Yahshua the Messiah, but that's after his death. But these are things that they had to be shown by way of a vision. Then you have the apostle Paul, who was the, the last of the apostles, the greatest of the apostles, receiving a vision of Yahshua the Messiah to write the things that he says and to write the books that he says pertaining to the gospel. Because Paul wasn't around when Yahshua was preaching his gospel. Pick that up, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Because we're going to say the gospel quite a few times and we're not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're not talking about gospel songs and we're not talking about um, some made up gospel that we kind of talked, that we kind of read about in our scripture lesson for today. Uh, pick up 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Okay, now Apostle Paul is saying he's declaring, he's making a declaration, he's making a, a, a strong statement, as we like to say, a declaration of what this gospel is, read. Which I preached unto you. Now he's preaching it to them the followers his followers and fellow apostles read which also ye have received which where, also ye have received and wherein ye stand read by which also ye are saved and you are saved by this declaration of the gospel read if ye keep in memory what i preached unto you if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, read. Unless you have believed in vain. Unless you have believed in vain. You you believe you you really was just kind of going with it and didn't really believe it. You just kind of, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds right. I'm just gonna hang out because it sounds like the truth, but I really don't believe it. Um, read. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Read. How that Yahshua the Messiah died for our sins. Okay. Now, this is the gospel, how that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures. The first speaker began to go into the scriptures to show you a death throughout the scriptures. Read. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. He didn't stay buried in Joseph's new tomb. Read. And that, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture so in the scriptures you're going to see a death a burial and a third day resurrection according to the scriptures that is the gospel that yahshua came in to preach and to fulfill by way of the scripture. So everything you read about in the law and in the prophets, Yahshua fulfilled, including the lamb, the sacrifices, the temples, um, the law, the baptisms or the burials, the blood, and so on and so forth, written up in the law and the prophets, the things that they had to do, Yahshua fulfilled them. So those are some things that the first speaker talked about. And those are the things that we preach or teach in this course of study or this school, if you want to say that. So there's some other things that the previous speaker mentioned as in the law 
and in the testimony. So let's go to the law and get Exodus 24, uh, 25 and 8. Exodus 25 and 8. Mm -hmm. And let them make me a sanctuary. Now, we did mention that Moses was called into the mount. His Mr. Joshua led him into the mount and showed him a tabernacle pattern by the vision. If you look at the title of the chart that's before you, it's called Elohim, the archetype or original pattern of the universe. Now, Moses sees Elohim. So does Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel. But Moses is given an understanding because instead of, while he was seeing Elohim in a shape and form, and they describe Elohim in a shape or form, he was given an understanding by way of this tabernacle pattern. Now, Elohim is the archetype original pattern. Then he had a, an intangible tabernacle that was showed to him in the mount. That's what we're talking about now. Read. And let, let them, them make, me a, make me a sanctuary. That I may dwell among them. That I may dwell among them. According to all that I show thee. According to all that I show thee. After the pattern of the tabernacle. After the pattern of the tabernacle. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof. And the pattern of all the instruments thereof. Even so shall you make it. Now you have the instruments having a pattern as well. When the pattern was created. So this pattern consists of. Oh, go ahead. Go to 40. Before I get into the pattern briefly. Look at first. And look mm -hmm. at I'll make them after their pattern. Now, this is a, a, a re he repeats the thing again. He said, and look that thou make them after the pattern. Which was showed thee in the mount. Which showed thee in the mount. Now, this pattern that Moses was instructed to make is the tabernacle pattern or the tangible tabernacle pattern, which you see before you in the wilderness of Sinai which is consisted of a most holy place, which had an Ark of the Covenant, which is a beaten work, is a, is a, is a, is a gold, is gold, beaten work of one single beaten work of gold with two archangels overshadowing the mercy seat. It's a three part configuration making one Ark of the Covenant. Now that's a pattern. Then you have in the holy place, you have a seven branch golden lampstand was a beaten work, an altar of incense, and a table of showbread which held 12 loaves of bread in the holy place. And those are made by a pattern. And then you have in the court roundabout, you have an brazen labor, and holy anointing oil cup which held oil. To, so the priest can be anointed so he can officiate in the tabernacle and do his duties as a high priest. And then you also had an altar of sin and sacrifice, where, which had a grading system on top and four horns that went around it, which was brass. It was a, a, a brass altar of sin and sacrifice where they sacrifice the animals. Also in this tabernacle, you have a gate, you have a door, and you have a first veil and a second veil, which are dividers between each compartment of the tabernacle, still making one tabernacle. So now everything is made according to the pattern. Uh, pick up Romans 119 and 20. Romans 119. And then I think it's Isaiah something, something from the rising of the sun and the west. It's Isaiah something. Something, I think. I don't know. But go ahead, pick up Romans 119. 119. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, mm -hmm. being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, 
so that they are without excuse. So there are some things that we could take that Yahweh has created or the natural things to understand the spiritual things, even Yahweh's eternal power, how he has the power over death, hell, and the grave, or the power over death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension, and overturns, and overturns, so you can see him, how he really is and actually exists, as well as his supernal nature, how that the first speaker mentioned the supernal nature, uh, 1 John 5 and 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one. That's one spirit, something invisible. But then there are three witnesses that bear witness in the earth, which is the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. And those are natural witnesses pointing to something greater, which is the spirit. And have you believed the witness of man, the witness of Yahweh is greater, how the Father, Word, and Holy Spirit, these three are one, a unity, because this is the witness that testified to his son by blood, water, and spirit also, that Yahshua is the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. That, that's the pattern. And these principles are contained in the pattern, the tabernacle pattern, and the greater and more perfect tabernacle pattern which the previous speaker mentioned if we go back to the uh elohim archetype original pattern of the universe chart talking about the greater and more perfect tabernacle you see we have the outer court which will be represented by egypt and you'll see a death and a principle of blood then you will see a principle of water or a barrier you see the red sea after they sacrificed that lamb and put those four points of blood around the door, they went to the Red Sea where they were buried as they went to and through the Red Sea. And that spirit, well, you got spirit through the whole thing. You got spirit, you got the death angel in the court roundabout. You also have that pillar of fire with that angel in the cloud that led them to and through the Red Sea. And also that pillar in the cloud when the boat above, above the mount and later on that same pillar or that same angel in the cloud which would be Yahweh Elohim filled the temple so you have after the Red Sea that will be like your your brazen altar and it had a door in it that they came through so they'll go to and through the first veil after they went through the water, you got them in the wilderness of Sinai, where they built the tabernacle pattern, or the holy place in the greater, more perfect tabernacle, where you have, like we had in the tabernacle, you got light, you got food, and you got intercession. Or you have light, for, like the seven branch lampstand, you also have food, Yahweh rained down manna, and he gave them quail. And also you have an intercessor, which will be typifying as Moses because he interceded when the children of Israel broke the law of Yahweh. Also, he was giving, he was communing with Yahweh through Yahshua back and forth as an intercessor or a mediator to the children of Israel. Then you have them after 40 years in the wilderness, after the old heads died off, you have them moving to the promised land, which is Canaan land, to and through the River Jordan, which heat like the Red Sea. Why don't you pick that up in the scripture? Um, when they talk about they went through the River Jordan and the heat like until they're uh, in the Red Sea. Joshua, the third chapter. Yep. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. Mm -hmm. And all the children of Israel lodged there before they passed. Thirteenth mm -hmm. verse. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of Yahweh, the Elohim of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon an heap. 
They shall stand upon a heap. Is that it? Yes. Okay. So they went to and through the river Jordan, which would be like the second veil entering the most holy place. If you look on the chart, we have Canaan land being like the most holy place. Well, Solomon's son, David, was instructed to build Solomon's temple, which is represented by a man sitting on a throne. That um, Ark of the Covenant was the seat of Yahweh or Yahweh's throne where he will, the Shekinah will flash and appear on the Day of Atonement. So there, there's the pattern, the greater, more perfect tabernacle following the, the tabernacle power pattern following the greater and more perfect tabernacle pattern. Now, I want you to pull up the uh, next chart because everything goes by the pattern. Pick up the chart on the pattern and plan of salvation chart. So. In the school, like we say, we teach by a pattern. Everything goes by the pattern. So your Bible is by the pattern because it is a school and we teach by the pattern. You're not going to get this anywhere else. Your Bible is set up law, prophecy, and fulfillment. That's three parts of the Bible making up one Bible. That's by a pattern. Just like your most holy place, holy place and court round about. So now this is a chart on pattern of plan of salvation chart. This chart is an illustration of what, in part of what is in your Bible going by the pattern. So our first plate will be the transgression plate. And you see it goes by the pattern. You see Adam and Eve in the most holy place at the top. You see them in the holy place as the sun going down. And then you see them in the court roundabout. So all your top plates will be represented by the most holy place. All your middle plates will be going according to the tabernacle pattern by the holy place. And all the bottom plates will be your court roundabout plates. So in those plates, you will see, you should see a principle of blood or death, a principle of water or burial and or both, and a principle of spirit. Also, you're going to see a principle of 40, and you're going to see a principle of ascension or glorification going by the pattern. Now, that tabernacle pattern is the key to your understanding. And this whole chart goes the same way. If you look at the bottom of the chart, it's the same way. Look at uh, the crucifixion of Yahshua Messiah. Place that death, burial, resurrection, the crucifixion of Yahshua Messiah. You see him dead on the cross. You see him buried as a burial in Joseph's new tomb. And then you see him resurrect in the holy place. It's a resurrection. You're also going to see blood. You're also going to see water, water principles. Yahshua was buried by John the Baptist. And then you're going to see that's, uh, let me see, where is that? You're going to see him being, you're going to see his death because he's talked about his death as in the gospel. We talked about his burial as he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. Also that baptism is a form of a burial or submersion, or a burial, and you're also going to see a resurrection, or a line of spirit, a spirit line, blood, water, spirit, or death, bearing, resurrection, and they follow all along these plates at the bottom as well. So nothing is going to escape the pattern. Also, um, and nothing is going to escape the principles in the pattern. So this is a school of higher learning. I just wanted to kind of go over some of the things that we talk about in this school, which points to the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. And that is the true gospel going by the pattern. 
If there's any other gospel, let it be. Why don't you pick that up? Pick that scripture up too, right quick. Second Corinthians, mm -hmm. the 11th chapter. Because there's a lot of gospels out there. You got the gospel of the Jehovah's Witness, the gospel of the Episcopalians, the gospel of the Seventh-day Adventists, the gospel of the Mormons, the gospel of the Muslims, the gospels Fine. of the Baptists, uh, um, and other gospels, but they, they are not preaching according to the same gospel that Yahshua the Messiah preached. And we strive through Yahshua Messiah to keep the thing straight and keep the thing according to the way that he taught it. And he continues to teach it that way because it's by a pattern. Read that. Second right. Corinthians 11 and 3. But uh -huh. I fear, lest by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his mm -hmm. subtlety. Now, these things that they're going to see tell you on the word are going to be real subtle. And you can be deceived very easily. Read. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahshua, the Messiah. And your mind shouldn't be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Yahshua, the Messiah. That pattern is one, two, three, A, B, C. One, two, three, A, B, C. Continue. For if he that cometh preaches another Yahshua. For if he that cometh preaches another Yahshua, for example, Jesus Christ, read. Whom we have not preached. Whom we have not preached, read. Or if you receive another spirit. Or if you receive another spirit. Which ye have not received. That ye have not received. Or another gospel. Or another gospel. Which ye have not accepted. Which ye have not accepted. Ye might well bear with him. Ye might. What does it say? Might well bear with him. Ye might. <laughs> bear well. I will bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chief disapostles. Mm -hmm. But though I be rude in speech, yet mm -hmm. not in knowledge, mm -hmm. but we have been thorough, thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Now we have been thoroughly manifest among you in all things. And with those few words, I like to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jamie O'Dai. I'll be the last speaker, and I really enjoyed what came through the previous vessels, and the gospel was preached, and it's always a blessing to be able to be here, and um, I just want to kind of pick up where they left off, and I like how Dr. Uh, Wallace and Dr. Dai was going through, going through that migratory pattern and going through the, uh, um, where he was talking about um you can be easily deceived and if you preach another gospel which we had in the scripture lesson um i want to start at the scripture lesson and we're going to go back into the law and then into the prophets and pull out some principles yashua has put uh something on my heart and mind that um you know um i want to see if he you know go ahead and um get it out get it out um, to the brethren today. Um, go ahead. Uh, start at um, 2 Corinthians, uh, the 11th chapter, first verse. 2 Corinthians 11, 1. Mm -hmm. Would Yahweh, you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed mm -hmm. bear with me. Now he said, now I, I went to Yahweh that you would indeed bear with me in my folly and, you know, bear with me, read. For I am jealous of you, over you, with holy jealousy. Right, with holy jealousy. Read. For I have exposed you. That same to jealousy. Uh, hold on, that's that same jealousy. They say when Yahweh say he's a jealous hell, that's why I say I'm jealous of you with a holy jealousy, a righteous jealousy. Read. 
for I have espoused you to one husband. So this is our job as ministers to espouse to one husband. Now, when you go back down into Moses, Moses being born down there during the time of that death decree is raised in the ways of the Egyptians. And so at 40 years old, he goes out and he sees uh, Egyptians smiting his Hebrew brother. And it was through the vision that our founder told us that that, that uh, Egyptian was Pharaoh's son and that Hebrew that he was uh, smiting was Aaron. And so he kills that Egyptian, buries him in the sand. And then the next day when he comes out and he sees the two Hebrew brethren striving amongst them, say, so he say, well, why are y'all striving? Y'all are brethren. And they say, well, who made you a prince and a judge over us? Are you going to kill us like you did that Egyptian? So now that he knows the thing is known, he flees out into the wilderness and stays in the wilderness for some 40 years. He goes out there. He's married, gets married uh, to Jethro Wells' daughter, Zipporah. And after 40 years, Yahweh appears to him in that burning bush. Now, when he appears to him in that burning bush, he's making good on the promise uh, that was given to Abraham in Genesis 15, 13, 15, 12, 15, 13, that he would he would come down. They were going to go down and be in, evenly entreated in a land that wasn't theirs. And then he was going to come down and judge that nation and then bring them out with great substance. So Moses is commissioned to go back down into Egypt. His brother Aaron meets him and they go back down and they relay this message to Pharaoh that let the children of Israel go. Now, Yahweh devastates Egypt with 10 devastating plagues. And that last plague was the death of the firstborn. Now, them being down in Egypt, they were given a prescribed way to come out. They had to put the blood of a lamb, they had to slay a lamb put the blood on the two side posts, upper door posts from a basin. That's what you have depicted here on this Moses chart or Elohim, the archetype original pattern of the universe chart, making a four point configuration. Now that testifies, Joshua said in John 5, uh, 43 or 539, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testifies of me. You don't have to get it. So that act testifies to his death the slaying of the Pascal lamb and the blood, death, blood. They come through the two and through the divided waters of the Red Sea. So you got water and burial led by the cloud and they go out into the wilderness. That's a resurrection. So that spirit, resurrection, blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection, testifying to Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. Now, when they get out there, Moses is as an intercessor to them. He has three principal trips onto that mountain. That second trip, he goes up. And well, before he goes up on that second trip, Yahweh speaks that law down into their hearing. Now, Moses has espoused them to Yahweh. So then Paul is saying the same thing. Oh, I espoused you to one husband. Bring it on up to today. If you're being taught by some, they should be espousing you to Yahshua, the Messiah. If they not, it's a problem. Go ahead and read. That I may present you as a chaste version to mm -hmm. Yahshua. Right. That's why I made him clean up there. Moses made him clean up there before Yahweh spoke down to him. They were they were presented as a chaste virgin. So if Paul is saying that you got to see it back in the law, that's why we go back to the law. That's why we keep talking about Moses. I had somebody ask me, all y'all talk about is Moses. Well, yeah, because that's where all of the principles are that you're going to see throughout these scriptures. That's why Yahshua and Dr. Dotson Wallace had it read. It said at the beginning of Moses, he expounded unto them everything in the scriptures concerning him. So all of this is testifying to him. We should be a spouse to him, just as they were a spouse to him back there. Read. For I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Ah, here we go. Now on that second principal trip, Moses sees the creation of the heaven and earth, and then he sees them at rest. So when he comes down, then he sees 33 days of the tabernacle. So when he comes down and he sees them worshiping that golden calf, he doesn't understand that. He said, what are y'all doing? I espoused you to one husband. But this goes back to what Dr. Uh, Jamie O'Dodd said. It, it was, they were easily deceived. 
And through the subtlety, it had them doing something that they were told not to do. Now, on that third trip, when he goes up, he sees a recapitulation of the creation of the heavens and earth. That's Genesis second chapter, right? And then he sees the transgression. Now, read that verse over again, Dr. Carol Dye. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. As the serpent beguiled Eve, Moses sees that, that act happen. Now that's back in Genesis, the third chapter. Yahweh told them, told Adam, don't touch the tree. Eve, when uh, the serpent came to her, he asked her, did Yahweh say not to eat from this tree? She said, yeah, he said, if we eat from it or touch it, we'll die. He said, well, no death will you. <laughs> you won't surely die. He only changed one word. And when he changed that word, he's trying. And also notice this. You see him here? This is this is what it's written on him, uh, Lucifer. Continue to read there, uh, Dr. Carol Dye. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahshua, the Messiah. I think you can eat from every tree, but that tree is pretty simple. I mean, I'm, to me, that's a pretty simple commandment. Don't eat from this tree. You know what I tell my, my kids? I like the Minute Maid juice. Don't drink that juice. It's pretty simple. You can drink any of the other juice in this refrigerator. Don't touch that one. It's the simplicity of the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection, according to the scriptures. If you don't have that foundation in you, just, and like I said, this is why we go back to Moses and talk about Moses, to build that foundation. You have to have that foundation laid, and or, and, or really the Holy Spirit in you, to cause you to obey. Go ahead and read. For if he that cometh preaches another Messiah, mm -hmm. whom we have not preached. So they've shown, the apostles did how that by the law and by the testimony that it testified to Yahshua. Moses, when he was out there in the wilderness with the children of Israel, had wrote, Deuteronomy, I think it's 15, 18 or 18, 15, Yahweh thy Elohim shall raise up a prophet like unto me. Him shall you hearken to. So they knew we got a redeemer coming while they were out there in that wilderness. And as they go over in the Canaan's land, Joshua takes them over as Moses dies off. They're in 40 years conquest of Canaan's land. So they came out of Egypt by the blood, water, spirit. They always had light out there. This is according to our tabernacle pattern. They always had light out there and they had bread from heaven and Moses made intercession for them. And even as they went up into Canaan's land, they were able to um, put that tabernacle on Mount, Mount Moriah in the... Uh, build a temple over there go ahead and read or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received mm -hmm. or another gospel or another gospel that now we're talking about the gospel of yahshua the messiah and 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 and, and like dr jamie odai said you got people talking about the gospel of jesus christ they got the four gospels the gospel of this the gospel of that you know The gospel is the death, how that he died, how that he was buried, and how he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So the scriptures are his uh, witnesses. They testify to him. Read. Which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Read. For I suppose I was not a whip behind the very chiefest apostles. Read. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Mm -hmm. But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. Read. Have I committed an offense in abasing you that ye might be exalted? 
because I have mm-hmm. preached to you the gospel of Yahweh mm-hmm. freely. Mm-hmm. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. Right. When I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for That's that right. which was lacking to me, the brethren which came to Macedonia supply. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. As the truth of Yahshua is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, Yahweh knoweth, but what I do, that I will do that I may cut off occasion from them, which desire occasion. Okay, now listen listen to this. He said, but what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. So you got to have some people to desire occasion against you when you come preaching this gospel. Moses, when you go back to Moses, go back to the law, when you go back there to Moses, they came to him, Nathan, Dathan, and Korah, to say, hey man, do he just speak through you? They find they tried to find occasion against him. Say, well, the whole whole the whole congregation is holy. And Moses said, okay, well, y'all got to get your senses together. And then y'all we're gonna show you who he who he's uh, uh uh working working through here. And the earth opened up and swallowed them up out there in the wilderness. So if you've seen it back there, you're gonna put, you're gonna have people. To, to seek occasion against you. They didn't like Moses. They didn't like, that's why they were rising up against him. Read. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. That's right, read. For such are false a prophet. Apostles. Here we go. Here we go. For this, such are false apostles. Read. Deceitful workers. Deceitful workers, they're, 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 the work they're doing is what's deceiving people. Read. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Yahshua, the Messiah. How many apostles did Yahshua have? According to the scripture, how many apostles did he have? Twelve. Like Twelve. So the, they, these are people said they're transforming themselves. Or these, what this really is. And he's going to expound on that. What they really are are satanic spirit. They're using, they're using Yahshua for an occasion against people to deceive people. And this is what Paul is warning them of. So they're coming in his name, and we we had that read, but let another come in his own name. Then he told them in Matthew 20, 24th chapter, oh, they're gonna come in my name and deceive many. Read. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. All right. Go go back here. This is the um, chart on the pattern of plan of salvation. You see this? This is this is Satan. This angel, this angelic. You ever thought that it would be much easier if Dr. Kinley had to put a horn, some horns and a tail on that? Then everybody would have knew, yeah, that's Satan. But he didn't do that because this is the way he saw it. A beautiful, angelic creature, a creature of light. He transforms himself into an angel of light. But it was what was in him, his attributes, that showed him to be a serpent. Hold where you are, Doc. Get Ezekiel 28 and 12. Hold, hold where you are in in in, in Second Corinthians, uh, eleven chapter. But get Ezekiel twenty eight and twelve. Now remember, he just told you, Paul just told you, and the reason he's saying that he's transformed into an angel of light is because it's being drawn out of the law and the prophets. He had a vision, so Paul saw the same thing. Ezekiel twenty twelve. Hmm. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus mm-hmm. and 
him. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim, thou settest up the thou sellest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So this is let me preface this by saying this. This it, he's talking about the king of tires, but he's really talking about what's in him, which is Satan. Satan is incarnated in him at this point. So it's talking about the spirit that's in him. Read. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of Yahweh. Every precious stone was thy cup. That's right. Thou hast been in Eden. Because here, here he is back here in Eden. Read. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond. Mm -hmm. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. Read. <clears throat> the sapphire, the emerald, and the car carbuncle. And mm -hmm. gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Read. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have now set he's anointed too. He's anointed too. So when people say, Oh, I got an anointing, well, which one? Because he's anointed just like Messiah means anointed one. But he's also anointed. Read. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Thou walked up and down in the middle of the stones of fire. That's the angels, read. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created mm -hmm. till he was found in thee. Okay, so that people think he was a good angel that went bad. That's not so. You can't, if, if, if iniquity was found in him, it had to be there. He had to have been created with it. You can't, you can't find water in a rock if it's not already there. So that iniquity was already there. It just manifested later. Read. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Mm -hmm. And thou hast sinned. Mm -hmm. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of Yahweh, and I will destroy thee, O covered cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Right. He said he's going to cast him out of the mountain of Yahweh, just as he was cast out of heaven. And cast down into the earth. Now somebody say, well, I don't believe that. Well, in your physical body, your body here. Here, let's pull this up. In this physical body, you have what you call a vagus nerve. And it comes all the way down into your gut. Vagus means uh, vagabond. So Yahweh put it right in you. Go ahead and read. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Because of his what? Beauty. Because of his beauty. Do you know Lucifer means son of the morning, light bearer? He was a beautiful angel. That's why we don't have him on none of these charts with a pitchfork and tail. He's a beautiful angel. So Paul is saying to the Corinthians, listen, don't marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Don't look at the outer. Listen to what comes forth out of a vessel's mouth. Read. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast mm -hmm. corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. By reason of his brightness, right? Read. I will cast thee, into, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. That's right. So stop there. Uh, Dr. Carol Dye, continue reading where you were in 2 Corinthians. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And mm -hmm. no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Read. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed. And As now, stop. If he can be transformed into an angel of light, then it's no great thing if his ministers are going to do it. That's who they're following. So they're going to be transformed into angels of light. Now, I, I gave you the example with Korah, Nathan, and Nathan back in the law. All throughout the, the, the prophets, uh, the law, and through the prophets, you have false, you have false 
prophets. You got to have false prophets because you got real prophets. You got to have, uh, uh, and I'm talking about in Israel. I'm talking about amongst the congregation. Nathan, Dathan, and Cora was amongst the congregation. This wasn't no outside person. These were people that were among them. Get, um, I, I want to say it's Jeremiah 23 and about 19. Jeremiah 23 and 19. Behold, a uh, world. Uh, uh, start, start, I'm sorry. Start at um, 23 and 23. 23 and 23. Mm -hmm. And my Elohim at hand, and my Elohim at hand, saith Yahweh, and not a Elohim afar off. Mm hmm. Can any hide himself in the secret place that I shall not see him, saith Yahweh. Now that should let you know, we preach here, the ever presence of Yahweh, he is always present. He is at no time absent. Your very being is made up of him. You are spirit materialized. That's why we say you are Yahweh. So he's at all times present, always that's why he's telling them, can any hide himself in secret place? You ain't know where you can run or hide from him. That I shall not see him. Now you got people that think they can. But it says the eyes of Yahweh are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. Read. Not I feel heaven and earth, saith Yahweh. I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name saying i have dreamed i have dreamed mm -hmm. how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that the prophets lies now how long shall this be in the prophets the heart of the prophets that prophets are lie? what's causing them to do it remember it's just repeating itself what was afflicting the children of israel in the wilderness it's the same thing that's afflicting them now that's causing them to prophesy lies and they know it's not Yahweh talking to them, and yet they're saying it is. Read. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Of the deceit of their own heart, or they're working the mystery of iniquity. Read. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. That's right. Baal means Lord. So you got people out here that are preaching in the name of the Lord, but they're really false. They're really false prophets, but they appear to be righteous or they appear to be angels of light. And that's what that's what makes it so confusing for people, because they look, well, this looks right. Look at this. Look at this here. Uh. Here. You see this down here? If you're if you don't know, and you have a carnal mind to go with it, this looks right. And Dr. Kinley said that in one of his lectures I was listening to, he said people come into class, where's the communion set? Where's the, ba the the baptism? Where's the water? Because they think that's right. Not understanding that Yahshua fulfilled that. It was instituted back in the law, and then he fulfilled it with his death, burial, resurrection. Go ahead and read. Uh, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. That's right. So he didn't have my word. Let him speak my word faithfully. Read. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Is not my word like a fire, saith Yahweh? That's right. That's right. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Mm -hmm. 
Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith Yahweh, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Exactly. Do you understand what he's saying? These are, these are, some, these are not people that are outside of Israel. These are people that are in Israel. These are Hebrews. These are Israelites that are saying they're amongst the congregation. Read. Behold, I am against the prophet, said Yahweh, that he that use their tongues and say, he said. Behold, mm -hmm. I am against them that prophesy false dreams, said Yahweh, and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies. And by mm -hmm. their type, their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith Yahweh. That's right. And see, he said, and they're saying, "Well, I was sent," and he said this. But he said they, and there was another. It's another scripture. He said they ran, and I didn't send them. And then they're prophesying in my name lies. Perfect example. What this is talking about was during the time of uh, uh, Jehoiakim. He was Josiah's son. He was the king of Israel. Nebuchadnezzar made an incursion uh, for about three years, three incursions around Israel for like three years. And there were prophets in Israel telling Jehoiakim, hey, man, everything is going to be all right. Y'all, we're going to break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar off of us. These were these were Israel Israel Israelite prophets telling them that, and this is what this is what he's uh, talking about here. And he came in with, with through Jeremiah and told them, no, he ain't gonna break that yoke off for y'all because y'all want to worship Baal. Oh, you going into captivity? And if you don't go, he gonna bring the sword against y'all. He gonna bring famine against y'all, and he gonna bring uh, pestilence against y'all. That's why they didn't like Jeremiah. And they to the point they locked, they put him in jail, put him in a dungeon. So see, you're gonna always have until this thing goes out, you're gonna always have false prophets or people appearing to be righteous that are really not. The inward, Yahshua put it like this. He said, Beware of false prophets. He said, for uh they come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. Go over and get Matthew 24. So you see that in the law, you see it in the prophets. It's just repeating itself. There's nothing new under the sun as it comes as it pertains to principle, principles. And then Yahshua is going to tell them the same thing before uh, he's crucified. Uh, Matthew as uh, twenty-four. Matthew twenty-four one. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came unto him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahshua mm -hmm. said unto them, See ye not all these things? There I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Mm -hmm. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And mm -hmm. Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So somebody, people are going to come preaching to you, but he's letting them know. And these, he's talking to his uh, disciples here. Take heed. First thing he told them, take heed that no man deceive you. Deception is what happened in the beginning, and that's what's happening now in the end. Take heed that, and it's coming through man. Take heed that no man deceive you. So when our founder had that divine vision and revelation he came and he preached to the people and not only did he tell them, I had a divine vision and revelation. He told them, you make me prove it. Don't believe it because I said it. You make me prove it until you are satisfied. I have not heard one minister on TV, one minister ever in person, one preacher, pastor, uh, uh, monsignor, guru, rabbi, not one to say, make me prove it. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah. And now, shall that goes back to what Paul said. It, no marvel. Uh, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And it, it ain't no big thing if his ministers do it. 
Now, for many shall come in his name, saying, I am the Messiah. Well, what did Yahshua say? Yahshua said, I am the light of the world. And he was. And still is. So they're going to come and say the same thing. Well, I'm the light of the world. Pope John the 23rd, when he was dying, he said he was the light of the world as he was dying. This thing is beautiful when you understand it. And he said, what are they going to do? He said, they're going to come in his name say, I am the Messiah. And what, what's going to happen, Dr. Dr. Carol? Many. And going to deceive many. He didn't say they might. He said, they are going to deceive many. I'm going to jump this real quick because I got 10 minutes. Listen. Um, hold, hold there. Get um, Second Peter two and one. In order for you to be able to discern what's right and what's not, there are in, in many false prophets. He talked about that here. Shall shall go out. Shall arise and say that's twenty four and eleven. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. You don't want to be a part of that many. Many means a lot. Mo you can see the whole world is deceived and we were all at one point and I grew up in class and I'm thankful to Yahshua that he brought me out now if you got uh, Second Peter 2 and 1 Second I'm going to say uh, before you read that I'm going to say this in order for you to know what is right and what's not. Now, our founder came, he preached it, and he proved what thus said Yahweh. He proved to us by the scriptures what was right. John says in 1 John, the fourth chapter, beloved, believe not every spirit. Test the spirits, try the spirit to see whether they are of Yahweh or not. And then he got, well, you know what? Before you read with that, uh, Dr. Carol Dak, can you get that first John four and one? Yes, first John four and one. Believe, beloved, believe not every spirit. Mm -hmm. But try the spirits. You gotta test them. Yahweh. Read. Now he's gonna show you how. Read. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Same thing Yahshua said, because it's the same spirit speaking through him. Read. Hereby know ye the spirit of Yahweh. Every spirit that confesseth that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is of Yahweh. Now, this is how you're going to know. If they're confessing that Yahshua is come, that's present tense. This is after the crucifixion. Present tense, in the flesh. In whose flesh? In yours. In your heart and mind. Read. And every spirit that confesses not that Yahshua the Messiah is come in the flesh is not of Yahweh. So we know that Yahshua, Yahweh, Elohim is Yahshua. These three are one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Every spirit that confesses not that Yahshua is come in the flesh, that, that's not a Yahweh. The, I think the Christians and the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Muslims and the Jews are all saying, no, he's not the Messiah. I think all of them are saying that. Well, the Christians say he is, but uh, by their works, they deny. Because the works that they're doing according, based on that law that he fulfilled is what's condemning them. Read. And this is that spirit of anti-Messiah. Who's the anti-Messiah? Satan. Satan. He's Where? the anti and, and And remember, he's transformed into an angel of light. So these people are standing up there listening, sitting in them pews, listening in the synagogues, in the mosque, and uh, the churches, listening to this stuff. And they don't realize that that's them satanic spirits up there. That's how you try the spirits. 
We're preaching fulfilled. If anybody in these schools come and tell you anything other than Yahshua fulfilled the law and the prophets and the Holy Spirit was poured out, he's an anti-Messiah. I don't care if he is sitting in IDMR. If they tell you anybody other than Yahshua is your savior, he's an anti-Messiah. I don't care if he is an IDMR. I didn't say it. The scripture said it. Go ahead and read. Uh, Where uh, he have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Thank you. Read, read uh, uh, Second Peter. This is uh, Second Peter. But there were false prophets among, also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. There we go. There Who were prophets. false and he, he's going back to the law, letting them know it was false, it was false prophets amongst them, even if it's going to be amongst you. Mm -hmm. Read. Who probably shall bring in damnable heresies. And what they're going to do is bring in damnable heresies, read. Even denying Yahweh that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And bring upon themselves swift destruction. They're going to by the doctrine that they're preaching, they're going to bring in damnable heresy, heresies denying Yahweh that delivered them or who re really is Yahshua that delivered them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Now, get Revelation 2 and start at 1. Revelation 2.1 Unto the angel of the assembly of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Mm -hmm. I know thy works and thy labor. And now this is Joshua telling them uh, to the angel of the assembly of Ephesus. So he's speaking to the Ephesians. And he tells them, look, I know thy works and thy labor, read. And thy patience, and how mm -hmm. thou canst not bear them which are evil. Read. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Exactly. See how they, they tried the spirit, like John told they, back there? You try to spit, and this is the same John that's writing, writing this. Don't believe every spirit, but you try them. Listen to him. The minute Doc said, the minute you open your mouth, we got you. This is why having respect to persons is not good. Well, no, it couldn't be him. And then when him starts saying something totally opposite of what the scriptures say and what the pattern says, and what our founder said, the vision says, well, he could be right because he walked with the founder. He could be right because, you know, he was sitting there when, 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 when the founder, went. this stuff is live. You're seeing this live. In 2021, you're seeing this live. Happened amongst our organization, happened amongst, uh, happening in the world with people following people. Just because they say they're holy. And the scary thing is, in, in here in Revelations, it says uh, some of these are their devils working miracles. They're doing things to get, didn't Janies and Jambres, they threw them rods down and they turned the serpents. They were able to duplicate them first three plagues. These are devils, were, were and that, uh, Dr. Kinley said it like this, say, you know, they show you the 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 little um magic tricks you see what i'm saying but these people are working miracles and that's how they're getting people to to be deceived instead of the person listening to okay is this what the scriptures say is this to the law to the testimony as opposed to well if this person did this uh, he healed somebody that was sick, and our founder did that. But he said, 
that's just a type and a shadow to let you know that the soul of a man can be raised from the dead. That's what Yahshua told them. He said, greater works should ye do, because I go into the Father. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cast out demons. He said, but that's just a type of the shadow to let you know that he can heal that soul. That's what this is about. It's about the soul. It ain't about the flesh. It's about that inner man being raised from the dead. It's about coming to a knowledge and an understanding of Yahweh as he really is and actually exists. Because you have people preaching Yahweh, but they preach in carnal ordinances. That's not him as he really is and actually exists. They're just using the name. They're just coming in the name. Try the spirits. See a day of Yahweh. So, you know, this is an awesome teaching. This is a beautiful thing. And if Yahweh is giving you anything out of what was spoken tonight, all praises go to his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. That concludes class for tonight. These classes operate by free will donations. Anybody desiring to make a donation, please see the treasurer, Dr. Ty Renshaw. Do we have any announcements? All right. Doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude and goes as follows. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and all time. Let us all say hallelujah. Uh, Jamie, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, line? You, you want to do it on this on this line? Uh, we can. Okay. All right.